Announcing the arrival of our guests on honor, Mr. Prem Rawat, the founder of the Prem Rawat Foundation, accompanied by Yang Bahagia, Major General Professor Dato Dr. Mohamed Zimbedin, the Acting National Chief Scout, Cam National Chief Commissioner, Puskulan Puangkap Malaysia. Our guest of honor, Mr. Prem Rawat, the founder of the Prem Rawat Foundation, Yang Bahagia, Major General Professor Dato Dr. Mohamed Zimbedin, the Acting National Chief Scout Commissioner, the Acting National Chief Scout, come National Chief Scout Commissioner, Puskuang Pangkap Malaysia, members of the National Scout Council, Senior Management of the Puskuang Pangkap Malaysia, members and guests, Datin, ladies and gentlemen, Selamat datang and welcome to the Memorandum of Understanding Signing Ceremony between Puskuang Pangkap Malaysia and the Prem Rabat Foundation. The Puskuang Pangkap Malaysia is delighted that we have finally come to this day. As you know, we had hoped that we will sign this MOU sooner. Furthermore, we are delighted that not just that the founder of the Prem Rawat Foundation is here, Mr. Prem Rawat, you are here in person to sign the MOU, but also for what it represents. Today, we are taking the partnership between Puskong Pangkap Malaysia and the Prem Rawat Foundation. This is indeed a historical moment and day for all of us here today. So without further ado, I would love to invite our Acting National Chief Scout Com National Chief Scout Commissioner, Yang Bahagia Major General Professor Dato Dr. Mohamed Zimbedin to say a few words. Please welcome. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi ta'ala wabarakatuh. A very good morning. Salam sejahtera and salam pengagap. The Honorable Mr. Prem Rawat, founder of the Prem Rawat Foundation, the Honorable Datin Paduka Dr. Santa Kumari, uh, members of the National Scott Council, Scott leaders and ladies and gentlemen. Today is a very historical day for Persekutuan Pengakap Malaysia because we have with us today the Honorable Mr. Prem Rawat, the founder of the Peace Education Program. Today is Prem Rawat's first event in Malaysia. This year, <coughs> because before this we all confined under the movement control order. And uh, he is here today as part of a three-week tour of the country. We welcome him to the national headquarters of the Malaysia Scout Association. <clears throat> when Datin Paduka told me that we would like to sign this event at the hotel, I suggested to her, please kindly invite Prem Rawat here because uh, he is such a world figure. Perhaps we can leverage with him to make the Malaysian Scout Association more known nationally as well as internationally. For your information, Mr. Prem Rawat, the world has 172 member countries. The world has more than 56 million Scots. The Malaysian National Scout Association members is about half million. So we are a leading world organization in Malaysia and the world organization of the Scott movement is the world largest youth organization. Mr. Prem Rawat's program, which we have been participating in the last three days, is actually available across five continents in 80 countries and conducted in 40 languages. Today, more than 1,425 educational institutions and correctional facilities are currently running the peace education program with over 300,000 people who have participated and changed their lives for the better. We are very honored and delighted today to have Mr. Prem Rawat with us to formalize 
the signing of the Memorandum of Understanding within Persekutuan Pengakap Malaysia and the Prem Rawat Foundation. In simple terms, this means that both our organizations can share expertise, resources, skills and experiences. In the last few days, we just concluded the first peace education program attended by about 30 young people and adult leaders. This will enable us to expand this program and shape the lives of our future generation. I have personally attended the program and have seen firsthand the effect of the peace education program among our young people and adult leaders. This session held for the past two days was held as part of our Scout Founders Day celebration year 2022. It is my hope that we can spread this legacy started by the Honorable Prem Rawat and contribute to the development of the nation with peace and stability. Ladies and gentlemen, the late Chief Scout of Malaysia, Tan Sri Shafi Saleh, had shared with me that he intended to bring both the Scout Organization and the Prem Rawat Foundation closer so that we can provide and recognize a more sustainable and relevant peace education program for the country, which will empower the young people and adult leaders and recognize them as leaders of change to build our nation and achieve the ambitions of developing a truly diverse and peaceful society. With this MOU, I am delighted to realize Tansi Shafi's dream permanently, marking his legacy in the sense of time. Ladies and gentlemen, for your information, we had established the National Scout Academy on September 29 last year as a national platform to support and promote continuous education programs for scout leaders and scouts. The Academy <coughs> organized the recent peace education program and soon it will roll out two accredited programs <coughs> in association with a local university, that is the Professional Certificate in Leadership and the Professional Certificate in Scouting. And we hope to open these courses worldwide. We are very confident of de developing scouts who will be peace practitioners and peace educators for the nation. A nation at peace is a prosperous nation, and a nation that prospers can help create a better world. As a member of the World Organization of the Scout Movement, we are now introducing one of its key programs called the Messenger of Peace, or more well known as MOP. A critical element of the MOP centers on educational peace program, especially implementing projects that promote peace, conducting dialogues, building awareness, and training young people to bring about concrete change in their respective communities. The recent peace education program confirms its relevance to scouting, as it can help participants discover their inner resources such as inner strength, appreciation, making better choices, and hope. Ladies and gentlemen, we aspire to make our youth as instrument of peace. Where there is, where there is disunity, let them sow the seed of love. Where there is injury, let them sow pardon. Where there is doubt, let them sow faith. Where there is discord, let them sow trust. Ladies and gentlemen, I look forward to share more of our plans 
with the Prem Rawat Foundation at future events. Thank you, Mr. Prem Rawat, for the great work that you have done worldwide. Thank you. Thank you, Dato. Distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, we would also like to take this opportunity to invite our guest of honour, Mr. Prem Rawat, the founder of the Prem Rawat Foundation, to say a few words. Please welcome. Hello, everyone. Good morning. Chief Scout of Malaysia, Dato Zain, Senior uh, Scouts leadership, ladies and gentlemen. So it's an honor to be here today to talk about a very simple thing, which is the efforts of what Prem Rawat Foundation does. To have this memorandum of uh, understanding with the Scouts of Malaysia is indeed a very big step for the foundation. Foundation has been involved in this peace education program, and I would just like to give you a little bit of information about what that peace education is all about. We are human beings. At the end of the day, we divide ourselves with religion, we divide ourselves with how we look, we divide ourselves with male, female, this, that, privileged, underprivileged. But at the end of the day, None of that is really true. At the end of the day, we're just human beings, striving for a better world, to be happy, to be in peace, to have joy. These are the aspirations right clear across the whole world. It doesn't matter what country you go to, whether it's the United States, whether it's Canada, whether it's England, whether it's Australia, whether it's India, whether it's Sri Lanka, whether it's Saudi Arabia, whether it is Pakistan, wherever you go, the aspirations remain exactly the same. So, what is this peace education program? It was started quite a while ago in a very simple, basic format. And it started going out to people who were maybe not in a privileged position, somewhere in prison. Now, when you're put in prison, one thing called hope disappears. It just disappears. Because you find yourself totally locked up, doors closed, and you don't know what's going to happen. Every day you try to survive, and every day that you are there is one day too long. You want to get out but you can't. And you f finally understand what freedom is all about. But here's the problem. When most of these people get out, they are so alienated. They are so alienated that they commit the crimes again and end up in prison again. We know committing crime once and maybe you go to prison, you learn your lesson, you never do it again. No, that's not how it is. You do it again and you end up in prison again. And this is what the prisons are full of. Because people are alienated from themselves. So what does peace education program do? Well, there is a state in India called Telangana. Peace education program was started in Telangana amongst five of these prisons. And as a result of the peace education program, Five prisons in the state of Telangana were closed. Why were they closed? No repeat offenders. 
they would go and they would not come back. Because one of the things that when we lose our integrity, when we lose who we are, then we don't know what to do with ourselves. We think that we, society hates us, we think the, the God hates us, we think everybody hates us. And so what's the point? Who are we trying to please? Because we don't realize that most of the time we're trying to please other people. And since this technology thing has come along called the social media, here is the platform to prove to everybody that you are somebody. So people go take the impossible selfies, such impossible selfies that they get killed taking them. You know, if you go to Japan, there's a line and it says, and there are signs like, don't go beyond this line because people would have their camera and have the high-speed train coming and they're taking a selfie and they're trying to get the shot and moving back further and further and further and the next thing you know, they get hit by the train. Makes for a great selfie, but you don't get to enjoy the fame. This is what's happening everywhere. We're not trying to please ourselves. We're not looking at our strength. We're not looking at our possibilities. We're looking at other people's possibilities. If there are five buildings, and you are the sixth building in the middle, and an earthquake comes, and five of those buildings are demolished, should you go ahead and demolish yourself too? No. If you have a strong foundation, you will survive it. This is what peace education program is all about. It's strengthening you as a human being. When you light a lamp at night, the light that comes from the lamp illuminates the path for everybody that comes in contact. It's not just the owner of the lamp. Light does not go, well, he's the owner and therefore I'm only going to illuminate it for him, not for anybody else. Whoever, whatever, be it a cat, be it a mouse, it makes no distinction. A strong individual is the light. It's not darkness, it's light. A weak individual is darkness. And especially in the realm, and we talked about this the last event that I had here in Malaysia, and we talked about this, the strength that is required. And in this day and age, even more. More than you can imagine. And families try to provide it, but they can't always do it. Schools try to provide it, but they can't always do it. In fact, in some places in the world, schools become the learning center for everything bad. Not good, bad. This is what happens when that darkness is not addressed. So this is what Peace Education Program can offer to the participants, the strength that is required. Not looking at it from any religious angle, not looking at it from any angle except you are a human being. And because you are a human being, you have what it takes to be strong from inside. You need to get to know yourself. The point is, is it going to rain? Of course it's going to rain. 
And will you one day, regardless of how you may actually own an umbrella shop and have hundreds of umbrellas, but one day you will be caught out in rain without an umbrella. Will it happen? Absolutely it will happen. Question is, what will you do then? What happens when we come across something that we are not prepared for? Where do we look? Who do we look to? And if we do not know how to look towards ourselves, we're going to be caught short. One thing you will always have <laughs> so far you're alive, is you. You will always have you. And if you have the strength in you, then you're good. Even if you're caught in the rain, you'll be okay. You will be okay. Because you understand what is important. So I look forward on behalf of the foundation, towards having this understanding and, like Datuk said, to be able to share the resources, to make both stronger, the, the, the Prem Rawat Foundation stronger and the Scouts of Malaysia stronger, so that more people can take the benefit and have the benefit of the peace education program. Does it work? It works. Believe me, the program works. And has it brought changes in people's lives? Yes, it has brought changes in people's lives. How far does it stretch? It goes all the way from hospice, where people are saying goodbye. And, you know, that is a very, very, very different type of thing. Because it's like for, for other people in the family, they're just watching everything unravel. Everything that they never thought would ever happen, they're just watching it happen. And it's a very, very serious and powerful moment. And at the same time, the desire is to make it nice. How can you do that? How is that possible? There are police officers who are involved. They have to deal. I mean, can you imagine? You know, <laughs> there are people who like to wake up in the morning and have the gusto because they're going to have a great time doing their job. And you get a police officer, you get up in the morning, you know exactly what's going to happen. You're going to come across criminals who are going to hate you who are going to absolutely flee when they see you. And they will do everything to harm you. I mean, can you imagine looking forward to that every single day except Saturday and Sunday? This cannot be a fun job to have. But this is what they have to do. And then they start to realize the potential that they have, the gratitude that they can have in their lives, the peace that they can have in their lives, the understanding that they can have in their lives, things begin to change for them. And when they begin to change, their outlook begins to change. Even those people who would flee, they begin to change. Because they're not so afraid anymore. It's not fear-based anymore. Do you know how much our society has been shaped by fear? By fear? It is unbelievable. Fear, 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 fear. From morning till evening, you're bombarded by fear. Students, they go to school. You better not fail. You better not fail. And the tape plays. Better not fail. Better not fail. Better. Instead of saying, 
we should pass. The tape goes, not pass, but fail, fail, fail. When these little things begin to change, you know, there is this other part, uh, and it's, 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 a, it's all about training. It's called intelligent existence. And I was thinking about that name, intelligent existence. When something exists, not because it exists, but it, is, it, it exists because it has a purpose. It has a reason for existence. It becomes an intelligent design. It becomes something that is there for a purpose. It is there for a reason. In society, when we look around, do we see things that are there for a reason or they're just there because of tradition? Because that's the way it was six, six years ago. That's the way it was 10 years ago. That's the way it was 20 years ago. The youth carries the burden and responsibility on their shoulders to make the country successful. And it is their success that will be reflected in the country's success. It is their kindness that will be reflected in the country's kindness. It is their joy that will be reflected in the country's joy. It is their understanding that will be reflected in the country's understanding. And these are the things that through Prem Rawat Foundation, because Prem Rawat Foundation actually does a lot of things. And one of the things that Prem Rawat Foundation does is has a food for people program. You know, and <laughs> I cannot talk enough about that program because we ended up, I'll, I'll make it very short, but we ended up in this one place in India because we have it in Africa, we have one in India, we have one in Nepal. And the Food for People program was started and it was like, well, how is this going to work? So, build a hospital. I said, no, we don't want to build a hospital. I said, build a school. I said, no, I don't want to build a school. So what should we build? I said, like, let's build a facility which will give these kids one time clean meal, clean, healthy meal, and clean water. And we will teach them to wash their hands, the sanitary uh, things that they can learn and, and, and do. So we began. And I said, look, I don't want to be, and nobody from the foundation should be involved in who, who should come and who shouldn't come to these facilities. We're going to have the local chiefs decide that. So doing it that way was away from politics, and it started. And something incredible happened. Not right at first. At first, the kids would come and they would be like, what do I do? And they like, no, you wash your hands first. Just learned how to wash their hands. They would sit down. They started eating healthy food. And one of the things about the food was, it wasn't food from some other country. It was food that they were used to. So in Africa, it's food that they would eat every day. In Nepal, it's food that they would eat every day. But this is what started happening. Slowly the health improved. We never built a hospital. We never built a hospital, but the health improved. The doctors found themselves sitting idle because nobody was coming to them. Many hospitals existed, little hospitals existed in that area, but our doctors were not doing anything. Then, the crime started to plummet down, 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 because the families were saving enough money, just one meal that their child was going there to eat, they could save that much money. They didn't have to steal. The crime went down. Didn't have to build a police station. Then, for the first time in the history of that whole area, the kids graduated from school and went on to universities. Didn't have to build a school. It was already there, but nobody was graduating. And what was happening? This one girl that 
actually I even interviewed her. She said she would wake up in the morning and her first duty was to collect cow dung. Her first duty was to collect cow dung. And then all of a sudden the breakfast would be ready and she would not have time to wash her hands and go have breakfast. After she started attending the Food for Facility people, it became obvious she had to go wash her hands first. She learned something. This is what that program has done. Same thing in Africa, same thing in Nepal. So these are really, really powerful things that the foundation is involved in. And we do not look at people's religions or whatever it is, you know. Wherever people need help, we want to give them help. And something amazing is happening in all these different parts of the world. Amazing, you know. And this is the efforts of the foundation. So I am very, very pleased that we are having this understanding between the two organizations and something wonderful will come out of this, I am sure. So I thank you again for giving me this opportunity to speak. If you have any questions, uh, I would be happy to answer. Hi, my name is Mani Vandan. I'm a national commissioner. Just like to find out what's your plan for Malaysia specifically. You've been traveling all around the world. Um, it's first time seeing you in person, so we'd like to, love to hear what's your plan you have or your intention in Malaysia in terms of promoting peace here. Well, I have been coming to Malaysia for actually quite a few years, and I have always found people to be charming in Malaysia. And they're, 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 I find it very unique situation because you've got Malays, you've got Indians from um, Tamil-speaking Indians, and then you also have Chinese. And everybody gets along. I mean, you know, just people get along. You don't see that happening so well in Los Angeles. You don't see that happening in Chicago. And you certainly don't see that happening in England. But people just get, people just get along, you know. And uh, amazingly enough, you know, when it rains, everybody kind of groups together under the bus stop or, <laughs> you know, pulls out their little umbrellas. And uh, however it is, people make it work. These are the very beginning and the first steps for peace. When we, as human beings, don't get along, you know, we, you are this, you are that, you are this, you are that, then we just get more fractionalized. And, and that doesn't go anywhere. So my plan for Malaysia is exactly the same for Los Angeles and for London and for everybody else, and it is to bring peace. The message of peace, to make people aware of what the possibility is. You know, the possibility in this life is not to be miserable. Uh, there are two walls, one wall that we came from, which is the day we were born, and then there's another wall that is going to be there, it's waiting for us. Uh, you know, for death you don't have to make an appointment. It's, you, if you show up, you show up, it's fine. But it's there. And between the two walls is the possibility for you to flourish. And I want every human being on the face of this earth to flourish, not to be in misery and pain and suffering. So my plan for Malaysia is the same that I have for everywhere else. <laughs> Have you traveled wide over the world, and then probably you have seen a lot. And when you see the condition in Malaysia, basically we are almost like I would say a middle class, like plus minus. I'm trying to say is. So where do you think that your foundation will come into play, basically, or what are kind of things that you plan to have to emphasize to to strengthen your ideas over here in Malaysia? Well, again. My approach is, I am a firm believer in people. I really believe that the strength of a building comes from the quality of its bricks. It does not come from the quality of its color. It does not come from the quality of its address, you know. 
something something avenue and so it's like must be the best building because it's on the best street no it comes the strength comes from the quality of its bricks and any nation the human beings of that nation are the bricks and when the bricks are weak that country doesn't matter what the ambitions are will become weak you don't have to look very far <laughs> across the oceans and there is united states of america the name begins with united and right now it's not united at all people are divided it in they may as well change the name but i know they won't because there are some good people who will not let that name be changed and this is what it hinges upon the strength of those that are good prem rawat foundation is really there to reach towards those people and to strengthen them more who can have the resolve to provide that light in the midst of the darkness so reaching out to people and giving them the dignity see there is not too many programs that actually try to deal in giving people their dignity they're charitable programs they will give people a bowl of rice but you know that person receiving that bowl of rice wouldn't mind if they also got a little dignity because this becomes very difficult for people when you lose something happens hope goes away you see that in races people are running 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 and then all of a sudden they lose and head goes you just feel that somebody just stole something from them but the foundation says no you still are a winner and the winner isn't the one who crosses the line the winner is the one that crosses this line first the inhibitions that are in you go beyond them now so that's what the foundation uh strives to do and this is i i hope i really hope that, that people understand that and that it becomes successful Okay so thank you very much and uh we'll continue with the program thank you Thank you Mr Prem Rawat distinguished guests ladies and gentlemen now we have arrived to the pinnacle of our ceremony the signing of the MOU so I would like to take this opportunity to invite um our national um acting national chief scout come national chief scout commissioner yang bahagia major general professor dato dr mohammad zin to come on stage together with um mr prem rawat the founder of the prem rawat foundation please welcome <laughs> you singing guests ladies and gentlemen The signing representing the Persatuan Pangkat Malaysia is Yang Bahagia Major General Professor Dato Dr Muhammad Zin Bidin Acting National Chief Scout Come National Chief Scout Commissioner and representing the Prem Rawat Foundation the founder of the Prem Rawat Foundation Mr Prem Rawat Yes please welcome
Yeah, I was surprised. What happened to my signature? It disappeared. <laughs> As a, as a token of appreciation from Puskon Pangkat Malaysia, we invite our Acting National Chief Scout to present our token of appreciation to the guest of honour, Mr. Prem Rawat. Okay. Thank you, Dato. Thank you, Mr. Prem. Please be seated. So once again, thank you for gracing our signing ceremony with your presence, Mr. Prem. So we'd like to invite um, Dato Zain to accompany Mr. Prem to um, leave the hall. Thank you. <laughs> 